Previously. I think I got a fish on. Oh, something's got my barbers. Let me see. What is going on here? Fish on. It's a little garfish. Ah. Fish on. Nice blue gear. So far, it's been tough. I've been out here a couple hours. Only caught one fish. So, I got a bobber with some live worm on there floating out there. Then I got another one, kind of a drop shot set up. Trying to touch the bottom, see what's anything down there. And I got a bigger, medium heavy rod that I'm gonna cast out there with some shiners on it. See if I can get any strikers. So this little spot right here, I'm getting a lot of good bites. The problem is, Every other cast, I get hung up on something. There we go. He's not taking it. I feel him. That might have been a little one. Felt like he took me into the structure. Fish on. That would have been my second smallie. And as a matter of fact, it was bigger than the first one I just caught a couple weeks ago. That's a setback of uh, ultralight fishing. I love ultralight fishing. Um, I like to fight. The problem is when I get them on steep banks like this, it's hard to get them up out there. I got a net, I brought a net with me, but unfortunately it doesn't go down that far. And those rocks are pretty steep and they're kind of slippery, so I don't want to get too close to the edge anyway.
this fish can fight. I tell you that. This fish put up a good fight. That fish pull up a hell of a fight. <clears throat> I'm glad I had my drag set properly. If not, he would have took my line. And I had just put on a heavier leader. So I'm using an eight pound test. And that leader I think was like a 15 pound leader. He just came through and just yanked that. He's a legal size, legal size for a smallmouth in Texas, based on Texas regulations of 14 inches. So he's a bit over 14. So I put him on the stringer. He's going home and he's going to the grease. I've eaten plenty of uh, largemouth bass, you know, growing up in Fort Lauderdale down in Florida. And I've uh, never, never tasted uh, smallmouth bass. so. This will be a first time for me as well. You know, all these years of fishing in Texas, I had never caught a smallmouth bass. And within the last two to three weeks, this will be the third one I caught. And actually, this will be the biggest one. I had one um, a little bit earlier that got off my line as I was bringing them in. Stay tuned. That overcast is gone. It went away within a matter of seconds. That cloud just moved. The sun is out. First time the whole day. Hopefully that'll change the bite. Fish on. Oh, another bass. Another. Another smallie. Look how they fight. Look how he fights. Come on. Man, those things put up some good fights. I caught that last molly in a little dip, a little curvature in the bank. Um, it's a lot of waves, even though the wind is not that, it's not um, blowing that hard. It's a lot of waves right now. There's not any boats out there, so I don't really know what's driving it. Um, but there's a little curve down there in these rocks and a little bit of still water down there so i threw down there thinking that that was a good ambush spot if i was a fish that would be a good ambush spot um to sit there and target bait fish so i was like what the heck fish on That's what I like. Well done, big boy.
Time to skedaddle. I'm about to get out of here. All right, so let's get these fish from. So this is a smallmouth bass, and what I'm gonna do is use a um, automatic uh, electric fillet knife, and I am going to fillet him. So first, you want to go behind the gill. And you want to cut right here in the slant. Try to get as much as meat as possible without cutting into that belly. So, and uh, you can put your hand right here in the fish's mouth to brace it. So here I go. You wanna cut down till you feel that bone, and then you wanna tilt your knife like this and cut right along that bone. Then what I usually do is stop right here. I'll flip the fish over. Make a small indent right here. And then take that skin off. take this rib cage out right here. So what I usually do is just, I'll just cut around it. Got your knife for you right here. Bonus. Don't have to worry about scaling the fish, gutting the fish, anything. Throw this in some cold water. Season it up. And we good. So let's do the second side of the fish. Okay, it's the next day, and I um, got my smallmouth bass in here, and I've been letting them marinate. They marinated overnight, um, and this right here, hot sauce. So let me get them out, and uh, let me get it all seasoned up, and uh, I'll get with you guys in a minute. All right, look at those fillets. Look how thick those fillets are. Smallmouth bass, that look like chicken right there. Wait till I get it all battered up. All right, so first, I'm gonna hit it with some black pepper. Then I'm gonna hit it with some rosemary. Rosemary. And this is the last of the rosemary that I had, but luckily, I just re-upped today, so I got some more rosemary. So with the rosemary, I give it a generous portion because I like rosemary and I like the flavor. Then right here, we got some garlic powder. So I'm gonna hit it with some garlic powder. And again, a generous portion of garlic powder. Ba-bam, ba-boom, 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 ba-boom. All righty. And then if you're from Texas, uh, especially up in central North Texas, you've heard of a place called Slovichex. Slovichex got the best uh, kolaches that money could buy. And so I got some of their seasoning. Um, 
So I'm fixing to spice it up with their seasoning to go on this chicken. They sell a variety of stuff, so this seasoning isn't, you know, kolache seasoning. This is for meat. They also have a butcher shop. So this is what I'm using for the oil. Um, it's called Beef Tallow, and it's by a company called South Chicago Packing. And um, the Beef Tallow is from uh, Wagyu Beef. If you don't know what a Wagyu um, beef is, look that up and look up Beef Tallow. Beef Tallow is pure animal oil, and it's not the seed oil like sunflower oil, cottonseed oil, um, you know, vegetable oil or anything like that. Uh, it's pure animal fat and it'll change your life. It'll give, it'll wake up the flavor of anything that you fry. Let me get my uh, tallow in the pan, in the pot. Get that in there, put some heat on to get it all melted down. If you don't know what tallow is, like I said, go check it out, man. They got what they call tallow, it comes from uh, it's animal fat, pure animal fat that comes from, you know, cows. And uh, they got lard, which is um, animal fat that comes from, you know, pigs, from pork. And you want to make sure it's 100% pure, right? And not mix with, mix with any of uh, any of the oil or anything like that. Don't mess with those oils, man. Stop messing with the vegetable oils and canola oil and all that stuff and get you some tallow, right? You get this tallow, you put that tallow in the pot, you're gonna have great grandma licking down on you, telling you, yeah, boy, you're doing something right. She's gonna be smiling. She's gonna say great, great grandson doing this thing in the kitchen now. So you get that tallow in there. I'm gonna let that melt down. Get my uh, meat in there. And um, stay tuned. Okay, now we're ready for the chicken wings. We're going to put the chicken wings in first because um, we want it to have that chicken flavor instead of a, a fishy flavor. So um, the chicken wings are going in first. So we're gonna let that cook for a few minutes. Um, and you'll know when it's done, it'll start rising to the top as all of the uh, moisture is released. And so, so y'all stay tuned. All right, y'all, let me get this uh, fish ready. I got my wings out, got them warming up in the oven until I get this fish done. And then I got something special for y'all. I'm gonna tell y'all when I get to it. It's gonna be Smallmouth bass, extraordinary. You know what I'm saying? So, um, first I take it and so I dip it into an egg wash. And the egg wash is just three eggs that's whipped up. And the egg, the amount of eggs is going to depend on how much fish you got. So, three eggs whipped up, um, season them with cayenne pepper and garlic. and black pepper. So I'm dipping them in here. I'm gonna do a double dip, make it extra crunchy. So we're gonna go in here with it. Make sure you wanna coat everything because you want that flour to stick. And for those of y'all who don't know, I'm using a potato flour. So most people, they use like wheat flour um, but I'm using a potato flour, and I will show you guys the bag in a minute to see what I'm talking about. Potato flour is much lighter and gives the uh, batter a nice crunch. Doesn't make you feel all full and bloated up like wheat flour. It's a lot more healthier. Potato flour, and another option is white flour. And so if you look into you know, white rice flour, I'm sorry. So if you look into Chinese cooking, you'll see that they use a lot of white rice flour and potato flour. And so when I started doing a little research on different 
um, styles of food around the world, I started looking at some of the things that people do, and I noticed that they cook with that a lot. So I was like, well, you know, what's the difference with it? So gave it a try, and uh, it turned out to be different and better. So I've been going with it ever since. We're going to dip it in there again. Bada bing, bada boom. Get it nice and coated. What they call it? Double dipping. I don't mean taking people money twice, taxing you twice. Double dipping. I mean, putting this batter on this fish twice. Some people have never eaten a smallmouth bass, and some people never will because it's considered a game fish. And game fish cannot be sold in supermarkets in most states. So in order for you to taste them, you literally have to know somebody that fish for them and catch them, you know, and hopefully they'll give them to you. Or you go out and you catch them yourself. Okay, y'all, so smallmouth bass. Okay, y'all, this is uh, what I'm frying the fish in, potato flour. And um, it's Bob's Red Mill. Bob's Red Mill, they have all different type of flours. Um, and they're all gluten-free, non-GMO, if you're into that. And if you can't find them locally, you can go on the web, just do a search, and you can order it. Have it at your front door within a couple days. Look at that golden fish. Man, that's gonna be some good eating right there. Look at that. Look at that color. That's that Popeye's chicken color right there. Okay, here it is all together right here. Um, this is my wife's plate. She's got a southern style fish and grits, shrimp and grits, with some fried okra, uh, dinner roll, and got some hot wings tossed up in there. This is my plate right here. Got some steak fries, some uh, smallmouth bass, fish and chip style. Got some hot wings in there, some shrimp, and a uh, buttery dinner roll. And that's some good eating right there. I don't feel like